well, 20% of people have the DNA and the genes to be a vegan and work and it works really well with them. Right. And so like you, you know, again, it kind of depends on certain situations, but also look, try things and see what works for you. Right. And that's why we have these different perspectives on here so you can learn. Welcome back to another episode of the Peak Performance Life Podcast. Today, I am going to go through and share what I have learned from over 160 podcast episodes being recorded. And I'm going to start with episodes, the most recent ones, episodes 100 through 100. And actually, this one, I think, will be number 160 that I'm recording right now. So over the last 60 episodes, some of my biggest takeaways, some of the biggest things that I've learned, we are going to get into those just kind of like real high level, just what I remember when I look back, I'm going to kind of go through these last 60 episodes real quick. And just off the top of my head, what rings a bell? What really stood out for me? What do I think were some of the most important concepts? So it'd be a great summary. And then if you, you know, think that you want to learn more, you can go dive deeper into one of these past 60 episodes. Of course, this episode is brought to you by Peak Performance. You can go to www.buypeakperformance.com. That's B-U-Y peakperformance.com and get 20% off your first order when you enter your email and subscribe to our email list. And when you do subscribe to the email list, we'll also notify you when new podcast episodes are released, when we have sales on different products, things of that nature. A couple uh, products I would want to highlight. We just came out with a really, really awesome new organic mushroom coffee. So we have them in the Keurig K-Cups available, and we also have them in ground coffee bags. And what we did is we took our same organic high-altitude coffee that's grown at high altitudes, that has a lot of antioxidants, what we believe is to be the healthiest coffee in the world, and we've blended it with five of the top organic mushrooms. So we have organic lion's mane, shaga, reishi, cordyceps, and turkey tail. I believe those are the five most powerful mushrooms, and we blend those with our coffee and now you can get them in, in K cups or coffee bags. So really, really excited about that product. And we have some other amazing products coming uh, down the line as well. Great. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. And some of the previous episodes. So the most recent episode, and this is something that is really a common theme. It seems that many people that we interview on this podcast are people who practice functional medicine. We really don't not that I'm trying to not have traditional medicine doctors on here, but it's just that, you know, traditional medicine versus functional medicine, right? When you think about the difference between the two, traditional medicine, you go to a doctor, you have a certain symptom, and then they prescribe you a medication based on that symptom. And a lot of times in the case of cholesterol, for example, which is another thing that I've been talking with a lot of my interview guests about, and many of them believe that statins can cause many, many other problems and that cholesterol is actually a good thing and that it's actually healthy to have cholesterol in your in your body. So really contradicting a lot of the traditional things that we've learned over the over the years about cholesterol uh, and things like that. But again, in traditional medicine, you have high cholesterol, you get prescribed a statin. If you if you trust your doctor, you don't ask any questions. You just take a statin. And I know people who have been on statins for 20, 30 years. And again, I'm not a doctor. This is not medical advice. I have heard even functional medicine people say, yes, in some really extreme cases that we do need to use statins. But for the most part, statins are way, way, way over prescribed, right? And that's, again, traditional medicine. Functional medicine, the difference is looks for the root cause of the problem. And that's what I want. So I know myself personally, if I ever had an issue or if someone in my family has an issue, I am specifically going to be looking for a functional medicine practitioner. Someone who is not just going to say, oh, you have high cholesterol, let's prescribe you a statin. Let's look at, okay, why is that? What are you eating? What are, you, what are your activities like? What's your stress levels like? What are some things that we can do? What's the root cause here? Is it actually caused by this or this other thing. And so that's really, really important uh, as well. Another thing is that inflammation, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to be releasing something just this morning. I was interviewed uh, on someone else's podcast and he wanted to interview me on inflammation and how I lowered inflammation in my body. And I personally believe that health is all about lowering inflammation in the body. That is, if you, if you say to me, what is, what is health all about? I'm going to say health is about lowering inflammation in the body. 
because every major disease stems from inflammation. Uh, Alzheimer's and, and dementia, those kind of things are inflammation in the brain. Uh, I, I personally believe, and we had actually, this was in one of the episodes, we spoke with one of uh, a doctor who is on, on the carnivore diet now. And he says he believes as well that the majority of surgeries that people get, knee surgery, shoulder surgery, back surgery, could be avoided if people just went on an anti-inflammatory diet, a low inflammation diet, right? And carnivore is a really extreme example of that, but with carnivore, you're really eliminating all carbs. Same thing with the keto diet, you're essentially eliminating almost all carbs and sugar, both on the carnivore and keto. And that's why those two diets tend to lower inflammation. Now, those two diets may be a little extreme for people, so a really kind of happy medium that I always talk about is what actually changed me and, and helped me heal my inflammation. Uh, what is that? 12, 13 years ago now, I had so much pain and inflammation in my fingers, hands, wrists, and arms that I couldn't even type on a keyboard. I had to use a voice dictation software for two years. And I healed myself through, there's a combination of things, but one of them was following the paleo diet and also eliminating foods that could be inflammatory as well, right? And so for me, I do try to avoid uh, other things like beans and, and um, legumes and things like that. Uh, and in the paleo diet, if you literally just look up, there's a million different cookbooks and paleo diet recipes and meal plans and all sorts of things. You could literally just Google paleo diet um, and, and learn more about it online. And it basically just eliminates, there's no bread, there's no pasta, right? If you eliminate the sugars, the breads, the pasta, the fried foods, the alcohol, right there, you're gonna be lowering your inflammation dramatically. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's a, a stem cell doctor who a friend of mine went to and he had back pain. And so he got some stem cells in his back, but the doctor then told him, hey, I want you to stop drinking alcohol for six months. And I also want you to you know, limit the sugar and all the other things as well. And I said, you know, that's genius because you might actually be lowering the inflammation from stopping the alcohol and lowering the sugar. And that might be doing more for your health than the, than the stem cells did, right? Who knows? But it's a really, really genius uh, strategy there. So lowering inflammation is definitely a big thing there as well. We also spoke with UK fitness expert Brian Keane uh, about rewiring your mindset, right, to easily lose weight and get healthier. And this is something that I'm always fascinated with, right? It's like, literally, I, I just told you in 10 seconds, right, eliminate alcohol, sugar, fried foods, seed oils, uh, bread and pasta, right? It's like right there, if you just did those things, you could dramatically improve your health, right? So it's not rocket science how to improve your health and obviously exercise and all the things you, you already know. So the question is, if we already know what to do, why aren't we doing it? That is the really, really key question. And that's why I'm more and more focusing on this podcast. Obviously, we're going to talk about different health strategies and different things, but I'm always fascinated with what are things that can actually change your identity, change your belief systems, those kind of things that can really rewire your mindset and get out of these old habits and these things that you have been struggling to overcome to get the results that you need. Further down, uh, a few episodes ago, we had the uh, founder of the DN founder of the DNA company, Kashif Khan, and talking about DNA testing, which I, I think is really fascinating. And I think it can be very useful. I think the cool thing about it is, unlike a blood test, which I think everyone should be getting at least once every six months to kind of see what levels you are and what you're deficient in and things like that. Uh, a, a DNA test, you only have to do one time in your life because your, your DNA doesn't change. So you can literally see, okay, here's my, I'm, I'm, I remember when I took it, they, I, I reviewed it with someone from the DNA company and they were like, oh yeah, you don't have the gene for detoxing, uh, something, something to the effect of like, I'm missing a gene for detoxing. So they're like, sauna more, be careful. It's probably why I can't handle alcohol or anything like that. Like some other people can, that's why I don't drink. So it was very useful just getting a few things. Oh, you're, you're, you don't have this gene. You do have this gene. Here's a supplement you can take for that. Really, really interesting stuff there. So I do like getting a DNA uh, test. Further down, we have Mary Ruddick, Mary Ruddick, who traveled the world to study the last remaining traditional cultures. I just had so much fun in this interview hearing the stories of her traveling around the world and meeting with these literally these these cultures that are still living off the land that, that aren't all technologically advanced with smartphones and internet and all this kind of stuff, right? And it's really fascinating, especially the one thing that really stands out is how she said, uh, to the, something to the effect of there is no, they really don't get diseases. I said, oh, do you see a prevalence of any kind of disease? And she's like, there is no diseases in these in these cultures. It's it's really fascinating. And they don't all eat the same diet, but they do in general mostly eat 
lower carb, right? They're not eating bread. They're not, there's, there's no bread. They're not, they don't have an oven to make bread, right? They're not making pasta. They're not doing these processed foods, right? So they're literally eating off the land. So it is more of a carnivorous type of diet where they're eating more meat. Uh, they're eating off of the land and things of that nature. So I thought that was very, very interesting. Uh, as well. I also thought what was interesting there, which I hadn't heard very often as well, and something that I'm going to personally start looking into, is about the clothes that you wear. I thought that was really fascinating as well, that she said that a lot of these synthetic materials that we're wearing, the, the nylons and the, and the, uh, and the you know, cottons that, are, that have dyes in them and things like that. First of all, the cotton sprayed with pesticides. Then they dye the cotton with, with dyes that could be leaching onto your skin and things like that. And, and so your skin is your biggest organ and you can be absorbing certain things. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I just actually listened to someone else who was speaking about how your underwear um, especially for men, it, your underwear could actually be lowering your testosterone, which I thought was pretty fascinating as well. So now, of course, I just ordered a couple pairs of these, you know, organic boxer shorts and some organic t-shirts. And, you know, the t-shirt wasn't quite as comfortable. Uh, the, the, the boxer shorts were okay. I got another one coming. So I'm testing a couple of different brands. And when I find the one I like, I'll probably just order, you know, 10 pairs of them or something like that. Um, because yeah, I, again, if it's something that's, and, and the reason why is because, um, you know, you're, for, for a man, your private parts down there are really absorbing a lot of things through the skin there. Uh, as a matter of fact, for people who take testosterone replacement therapy, TRT, in some cases, if you're giving a cream, a lot of times they tell you to put the cream on your testicles, uh, which is which is actually very interesting that you would do that. You think, oh, whoa, that's kind of weird, uh, but it has such a high absorption rate in that area, uh, and so that's why it's actually very important to potentially look at your boxer shorts. So that's kind of just a side note there that I learned. But Mary Ruddick made me kind of a, more aware of like, hey, you know, the clothes that you're putting on your body could actually have an impact there as well. Going further down the list, and I'm not going to go through every single episode. I'm going to go more through the ones that stood out the most for me. Um, Dr. Ted Naiman, I really, really enjoyed this one. He shared his satiety index per calorie. Uh, and so the point there is that not every calorie is the same. If you eat the same amount of calories in a steak as you do in a Twinkie, I promise you the steak will have you more satiated, more full which means you won't be as hungry, right? We know that if you eat carbs, they are not as satiating and therefore you eat more and therefore you tend to overconsume. Whereas that's why people who follow, for example, the carnivore diet, they are very satiated. I've interviewed two different carnivore people on the podcast recently and they literally said, I eat either one meal a day or two meals a day and I just have you know, two pounds of, of, of steak or beef, you know, per day, two to three pounds per day. And I'm never hungry, even though I only eat one to two meals a day. And even though I'm only just eating this beef, because the satiety index per calorie for protein is so much higher. And so for me, I'm really basing my entire diet around protein first, I want to have protein at every meal, I want to feel satiated, I want to obviously protein has so many other important factors for muscle building and for so many other things as well. But a lot of people I think don't realize that if you eat more protein, you won't be as hungry compared to if you're eating lots of carbs. And so therefore, it's also a great tool to uh, for body composition and to lose weight if that's what you want to do as well. Um, we had some some guest, uh, Dr. Sangwan, on how your emotion and emotions and your communications affect your health. I think that is actually very important as well. I think stress and your emotional mindset uh, does actually play a big role in your health. It's something that's hard to really, you know, you can't really quantify it, but it's something that we already know, that we all know, right? It's kind of interesting when people are like, oh, stress, the silent killer. And you're like, okay, great. Thanks for telling me that. Like, what do I, like, what do you mean by that? You just scared me. Now what? Like, how do I, what do I do? It's like, so it's hard to like really give practical advice around that. But the, the one thing I would say is to be very careful of what you allow into your mind, right? If, if you're constantly watching the news or negative shows or, or really, you know, violent things, and the most miserable people I know are people that watch the news every day. Literally, they're, they're always scared. They always have anxiety. They're always, the, the, the world is a horrible place. It's like, no, actually, the world is the best place it's ever been 
in history. You are safer than you've ever been in history. You are living as long as long or longer than you've ever been in history. There is an abundance of wealth, an abundance of food. There's all these things in the world now, um, way more than compared to in the past. So people need to look at things more in an abundance mindset. Uh, and I think controlling what you allow into your mind, obviously things like meditation, breathing techniques, visualizations. I've sp spoken many times on this podcast about my morning routines. Those kind of things are very beneficial for your mental health. Uh, and we say garbage in, garbage out. If you're putting garbage in your mind, watching the news, watching violent shows, watching, you know, uh, Grey's Anatomy, where it's in an emergency room and it's just drama, violence, people dying, people say that, you know, it's like this, this is not the thing you want to be putting into your mind, especially at night, uh, right before bed. Uh, it's really, really bad. Um, some other things that I will talk about here. So th there's another really good episode with Michelle Shapiro, episode 151, which is the right and wrong way to lose weight. And she really brought back to my attention, for example, the show The Biggest Loser, where I think people lost a ton of weight right? By counting calories and just exercising like crazy and lowering their calorie intake. But the problem was, I think it was something like 80 to 90% of the people gained all the weight back, right? And they did. And that, the problem with it is that they ruined their metabolism by cutting their calories way too much. If you're eating 3000 calories a day, and you all of a sudden just immediately drop it down to 1500 calories a day, that can cause some major issues with your metabolism. And it's not the right way to lose weight. It's not sustainable. You could have issues later on, with your metabolism. So if you want to hear all the science and more details behind that, you can listen to episode 151. But I thought it was pretty interesting. And you don't just again, you want to make gradual cuts. Um, yes, you can take in less calories, but don't make it so drastic, kind of slowly go down a little bit so that you don't kind of wreck your metabolism there. I thought that was um, very, very interesting as well. Uh, and episode 150 was with was with the Dr. Sean Baker, who is a super fit 57 year old world record holder. And he shares why he switched to carnivore and how he helps his patients now lower inflammation in their body. And he believes that he's helped many people avoid surgeries by lowering inflammation in their body. And really, look, personally, I can't do the carnivore thing. I cannot just only eat meat every day. It's just not in my DNA. It's just not something I can personally do. But to be honest with you, the more I hear about it, again, if we're talking about good, clean, grass-fed meat, the, the more I think about it, the more I hear about it, the more I hear all these success stories about it, I actually think it could be a huge game changer. If you love steak and you could eat steak every day and you could just eat steak every day, you know, eat, eat, a, eat a steak for lunch and a steak for dinner, you probably won't even be hungry for much else. And the carnivore diet, I mean, by cutting out all these other things, you can really lower inflammation in the body, especially for people who are, are really sick. Um, maybe you have an autoimmune disease. Maybe you have some other issue, something like that. I think carnivore can be a really amazing tool because, you know, people always talk about, this is another kind of thing that I've learned over the episodes as well. Actually, further down, uh, we did an episode about toxic superfoods, right? So I'll kind of relate these two episodes together. So in the episode on toxic superfoods, uh, she spoke about how, you know, kale, she, you know, if, if you're eating raw kale, raw spinach, these things are very high in oxalates and they can be making people sick and they don't realize it. You'd never think, oh, it's the spinach that I'm eating. What? Our whole lives we were taught spinach is healthy. Well, raw spinach, raw kale can be very high in oxalates and you know, there's many other foods as well, many so-called healthy foods that are actually high in oxalates. The point is plants actually have defense mechanisms. Now, don't get me wrong. I still like eating vegetables. I still think greens are healthy for the most part. Um, I think I, I do avoid raw spinach and raw kale because of the oxalates, especially after that episode. But, uh, you know, so vegetables do have their place. But if you're doing an it's Carnivore is basically like an elimination diet, right? Because when you're just eating the, the meat, again, you're eliminating the carbs, you're, you'll probably have a very low blood sugar, you're not going to have blood sugar spikes when you're not eating any carbs or any sugar, right? You're, you're basically just eating protein and fat when you're on the carnivore diet. And so your blood sugar can go down, right? There are people obviously we know that have reversed diabetes through keto diets and the carnivore diet and things of that nature by going on high protein, high fat, super low carb diets. So I think it's an incredible tool. 
And I am more and more of a believer of it. I don't know if it's something you would want to do long term. But I think for someone who wants to do an elimination diet and try to figure out which food is causing this problem, if you're having some sort of problem, I think carnivore could be very, very powerful. Uh, and I think, you know, we have to, one thing that I've learned over the years is that we really have to separate old things that we were taught, that we were brought up to believe that have been ingrained in us, right? Like, you know, I remember growing up, it's like, oh, meat is bad for you. And, you know, being a vegan is the healthy way to go. It's like, well, that didn't work for me because when I was a vegan, I was eating a lot of carbs, right? If you're not eating any meat, if you're not even getting any protein, and if your only protein source is beans, which a lot of people wreck their gut with beans, depending on the type of beans and the person, right? So there's just, there's just so many nuances that we have to really separate ourselves from what has been ingrained in us over the years, right? It's like people still talk to me about like, whole grains. It's like, oh, don't we need whole grains? I was taught my whole life that I need whole grains. It's like, no, you really don't need whole grains, man. It's they're inflammatory. They, they're, they cause spikes. It's like, you, you really don't need that. Um, so I thought that's a really kind of interesting note there as well. And look, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the carnivore diet. I'm not going to do it myself. But um, I, I mean, I think it's a great way for people who want to do an elimination diet. Uh, episode 148, Dr. Morgan Nolte spoke about how your insulin resistance can predict your future health. And I thought that was really, really interesting how she said that uh, your insulin resistance, your numbers that you get, and that's through a blood test, you can see that number, that number now can show your future health in 20 years from now. And so uh, I was happy to hear that because um, your HbA1c is another one that's commonly looked at. And my HbA1c has always been a little higher than I've liked it to, but my insulin resistance number has been really, really good. Uh, and again, it's been kind of confusing me like, well, if I eat low carb and I don't eat sugars and I don't drink, why, why is my HbA1c a little high? And some people are saying, look, you know, some, some people genetically just have a higher baseline than other people and, you know, things of that nature. I'm still going to try to work and do everything I can to lower it. But uh, at least my insulin resistance is good. That made me feel a little bit better there. But she talks about for those who might have high blood sugar, might be diabetic or pre-diabetic, you'll probably want to listen to that episode number 148. Um, let's see here. In episode 146, it was pretty fascinating, Dr. John Jackwish, uh, who sp spoke about like, uh, one thing that he really he busted the myth of how much protein your body can absorb in one meal. So I remember growing up, when I first started like lifting weights and, and taking protein and stuff, people were like, oh, you should only do like 25 or 30 grams of protein at a time, or your body can't even consume more than 35 or grams or 40 grams of protein. There were all sorts of different numbers that people would throw at you. For the most part, it was like, your body can't absorb more than 40 grams of protein at a time. So if you eat more than that, you're just wasting it. And he's like, no, well, actually, that's been completely debunked. There's been studies that show that. And Dr. John Jackwish himself, he's another carnivore, right, who is super jacked, by the way. Um, you know, he does, he has been on TRT, testosterone replacement therapy for many years. He's a big fan of that. He has a clinic that offers that to people, which by the way, side note, another thing I've learned over these past 60 episodes and through other material that I've been consuming is that there's been a really bad misconception about testosterone replacement therapy, especially for people who are over 40 years old. Um, we're not talking about steroids here. Obviously, steroids are bad. Taking high doses of testosterone is bad. But for someone who has very, very low testosterone, testosterone replacement therapy is a life changer. Um, by the way, it increases muscle, which we know is great for longevity. You lose fat. Uh, you, you, so your body composition is better there. You have more energy. You're more motivated to exercise. You're, you feel better. You have, you're, you're in better mood. Things like there's so many, many benefits. And when you think about, when you talk about, okay, so what are the risks then? A lot of the risks don't really seem to really have much of a correlation. I heard someone else talking about like, oh, well, doesn't, isn't testosterone going to give you prostate cancer or something like that? And there's really nothing, it's, that's not really founded on any solid evidence. Um, so that's something as well over these episodes here. And we've done a couple episodes over the last 60 with people who do talk about testosterone replacement therapy and other hormone uh, replacement types of therapies. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually kind of more and more of a believer of those. Right now, my levels are pretty decent, so I actually don't feel like I need to go on it. I also really don't like the idea of injecting myself with a needle multiple times a week, which, you know, is 
apparently using a needle is the most effective form of testosterone replacement therapy um, that has the least amount of side effects and things like that, or works the best apparently. And that's not something I really want to do. I'm just not a fan of that. But at some point, I probably will. I'm, you know, probably when I'm 60 years old, or probably way before then, I will most likely be on testosterone replacement therapy because I want to have energy. I want to be able to exercise more. I want to have all the benefits that come with it. And so far, I haven't seen any solid evidence showing any real negative effects against it other than rumors. And yes, again, people will point to, well, oh, this bodybuilder died. And it's like, yes, bodybuilders shoot themselves up with multiple types of steroids and huge, you know, 5X doses of what, you know, 10X doses of what you would be taking in your testosterone replacement therapy. So you really can't compare looking at like bodybuilders who have died and things like that. It's just incomparable to compare them with someone who's just getting their, their testosterone back up to a normal level because it's super, super low. So that was really interesting about Dr. John Jack, which he said he eats one meal a day and if I'm not mistaken, he said he eats three pounds of beef and one sitting, and that's his one meal a day. And by the way, the guy is absolutely jacked, absolutely ripped. Um, and so for him to say he eats one meal, a day, and so if you think about it, three pounds of beef, I think every pound of beef is about 80 grams of protein. So that's 80, 160, 240. So he's eating, he's eating 240 grams of protein in one meal, and that's his only meal of the day, and he doesn't get hungry because the protein satiates him so much. Um, and, and again, it's so the myth of your body can only absorb 40 grams of protein or whatever the, you know, whatever the number is at one time. The interesting thing about that is they said, well, it may be true that the 40 grams can only be absorbed at one time. However, it doesn't mean the rest of it goes to waste. It just, after that first 40 gram gets absorbed, then the next one gets absorbed. And it just, so it just kind of spreads out and it's not like it goes to waste. So that was an interesting one for me uh, as well. Uh, let's see, what are some other good ones here? We had a masterclass on HRV, heart rate variability in episode 143. That is a very important marker that is tracked on, you know, any device that people have a whoop or a, a aura ring or a Apple watch or whatever. People are always talking about their HRV and looking at their HRV and you can see what it means, right? If your if your HRV is, is very high, the higher it gets, the better. It's better for longevity. Um, there's a, there's a, a huge correlation between VO2 max and HRV, and those are both VO2 max and HRV are great signals for longevity. If you have a high uh, heart rate variability, high HRV, it's better than a low HRV uh, as well. And so just some real nuances there in that masterclass in episode 143. Uh, in episode 142, we had an eye health doctor. And, you know, I was really kind of surprised by some of the things that she said. Um, she actually, I actually thought, oh, you shouldn't wear sunglasses outside and that it's good to get some morning sunlight in your eyes every day. And she said, no, you can actually hurt your eyes and don't ever look directly into the sun that I kind of knew. Uh, but, but I do kind of like do allow the sun to go on my face in the mornings. And I did always like that. I still kind of do to a certain extent, but I just make sure I, I'm not looking into the direction of the sun. Um, she did advise wearing sunglasses. Uh, I do wear blue light blocking glasses uh, every night. And she was also a fan of that one as well. Um, further down in episode 141, we talked about how to test and fix your home uh, from dirty electricity, EMFs, things of that nature. I, I really like that episode. I think it's something you can do one time is have your house tested, have someone come out like we did. We also use these green wave plugins. You can probably buy them on Amazon, green wave um, electric socket plugins, and it dramatically reduces the electrical charge coming out of that outlet. Um, and so that's something we do. And I won't get too down, too deep and down the rabbit hole on EMFs and all this dirty electricity stuff. But if you want to learn more, that's episode 141. Uh, episode 140, Dr. Eric Corum, he, what really stood out to me, he's been a pioneer in wearables and things like that. But what really stood out to me about that episode is that he talked about stress and adaptive capacity. So what does that mean exactly, stress and adaptive capacity and how he decreased injuries in professional athletes that he worked with? So 
a stress and adaptive capacity. So for example, I know someone who went from not working out at all and they're like, all right, that's it. I'm going to get jacked. I'm going to get ripped. I'm doing two a days. And they literally, you know, hired a trainer and they had a workout session in the morning and a workout session in, in the, uh, later in the day. And so they went from zero to this extreme thing. And of course they got injured, they got burnt out, they couldn't sustain it. And then they went back to zero versus Adaptive capacity is more like, okay, so let's say you work out once a week, right? Or, or, or let's say you don't work out at all. Start by doing short workouts. Don't, don't, don't destroy yourself in the first week in the gym. Start slow, right? I think he mentioned something to the effect of increasing your capacity by, you know, 10 or 20% every week, right? So it's like, if you're, you know, don't, don't go from working out 30 minutes to working out for two hours. Go from 30 minutes to 40 minutes. Right. And then maybe a week later you go 50 minutes and then maybe a week later you go an hour. Right. So it's like people need to have a little more patience. Right. Everyone wants results now and they want to do things now. But I think having that patience is really, really uh, important there as well. Um, let's see. I'm going to try to go a little faster here to get through a little bit more here. Um, so yeah, in episode 135, we actually had a 26-year-old, uh, uh, sorry, a 26-year vegan, Dr. John Lewis. He's been a vegan for 26 years, and he's strong and fit. And what he eats and why he left ac academia after an Alzheimer's study that he ran. Um, and he also talks a lot about polysaccharides and why they are so important for brain health. And so I love having different perspectives, right? One guy's a vegan, one guy's a carnivore. I like hearing different different perspectives. It's definitely one of the biggest things I've learned over the over the years on this podcast is that there is not just a one size fits all. Um, there are different ways to do things. And by the way, that's the kind of the DNA test as well will maybe help you realize that, right? Like I did, I heard some stat, I can't remember where I heard it from, but it was like, well, 20% of people have the DNA and the genes to be a vegan and work and it works really well with them, right? And so like you, you know, again, it kind of depends on certain situations, but also look, try things and see what works for you, right? And that's why we have these different perspectives on here so you can learn. Episode 134, we had Dr. Mark Harper, the author of Chill, The Cold Water Swim Cure, and he provides evidence about cold, cold immersion. You probably heard all the rages of cold plunges. I got a cold plunge here at my house as well now. I hooked it up and I've been using that. And I think for recovery, I think it's really great um, to reduce soreness for recovery. Also, it certainly will wake you up and give you a lot of kind of dopamine and and uh, alertness. I'll tell you that if I'm if I'm kind of dragging and feeling lethargic or whatever, if I hop in that cold plunge just for two three minutes, I will wake up and I'll be whoo, I'll be lit up. I'll be my my brain will be as awake as it can possibly be, um, dopamine going and all that kind of stuff. So lots and lots of benefits from. Uh, mental health, uh, from arthritis, migraines, chronic pain being really dramatically helped with cold plunging. Uh, and we actually had another uh, friend of mine on the on the podcast as well, the founder of Birch Coffee, who said that he literally saw his HRV improving dramatically when he started cold plunging every day. Um, episode 133, Dr. Jill Carnahan talks about toxic beauty products. Really, really important. I th believe she gave some resources in that podcast episode 133 uh, for where to find beauty products that are not toxic. Um, I think this is a real major problem. I cringe, obviously, when my daughters are kind of spraying perfume all over the place and all these things with all these scents and all these beauty products they're putting on. And I'm just like, ah, it, uh, you know, but, you know, you got to pick and choose your battle. You can't fight, fight the kids on everything. But, uh, man, I wish they would, uh. I wish they would listen to me a little bit there on that one. That that kind of makes me cringe, just knowing that how toxic a lot of these products are and how these these chemicals, smells, these phthalates, right? Like those plug-in air fresheners are probably some of the worst things you can do, spraying these air fresheners and perfumes everywhere. Uh, man, I'll tell you, sometimes I go to the gym and, you know, please don't be this person at the gym that wears a tank top and just literally sprayed themselves for three minutes with underarm deodorant that has all these toxic chemicals. I mean, there are people that I can literally smell them from like 20 feet away. And I don't mean smell their their sweat. I would rather smell their sweat, actually, funny enough. I'm smelling this strong odor of deodorant with these toxic chemicals. I, sometimes I have to walk away and go work out in a different area because it's just so bad. Um, so again, 
don't be that person at the gym. <laughs> uh, people are sensitive to smells. I'm one of them. Very, very sensitive. When people are wearing tons of perfume or tons of other scented stuff, I can just smell the chemicals and I'm out of there. I want to get as far away from that person as possible. Uh, let's see. So oh, episode 131 was pretty fascinating. Light therapy and laser therapy pioneer, Dr. Brandon Crawford. He talked about the benefits of laser therapy for recovery from strokes, head injuries, ADHD, injuries, autism, uh, and even more. I actually wish that I would have known about his work when uh, my father, about five years ago, had multiple strokes. And I feel like if I would have known about his laser therapies and got him involved and got his laser devices that he actually can ship to your house, even if you're not local to where he is, and if I would have started using those laser devices on my father's head, uh, like he does for many patients that have strokes and head injuries and things like that, I think my father probably would not have the dementia as bad as he has right now. Again, that's just a guess. I don't know for sure, obviously, but um, my father does have dementia um, pretty bad at the moment. And it really started five years ago when he had a few strokes. And ever since then, it's been, you know, kind of accelerated uh, each year. I wish I would have known about these laser therapies. So for anyone who has head injuries, um, he, the, he works with people who have autism, ADHD, uh, and again, strokes and things like that. Check out episode 131 and you want to catch it as soon as possible. So if someone has a stroke, you know, today, you know, you want to get the, la the, the laser therapy on them as soon as possible um, and not let it linger too long there as well. Uh, I mentioned episode 129 is the one I mentioned before. It's with Sally K. Norton uh, on toxic superfoods. She actually wrote a book called Toxic Superfoods, uh, so-called healthy foods that are high in toxic oxalates. She went through a huge journey of herself, of healing herself, and she thought she was eating healthy by eating raw spinach, raw kale, the things we spoke about earlier. So that was a really fascinating one. That one's actually got a ton of uh, views on on YouTube and, and a lot of downloads, a lot of interest in that episode. Uh, which I thought was really interesting as well. Um, let's see. Uh, we talked about inflammation already. There's a couple more episodes about inflammation, which I think, again, is that's what health is all about, lowering inflammation in the body. Episode 127, Dr. David Harper talks about the scientifically validated bio diet that can help you lose weight, reverse diabetes, lower, information, lower inflammation, lower your risk of disease, and improve your health. And it's very similar to the keto diet, the bio diet of his. Uh, it might actually, from what I remember, it was very, very similar to the keto diet, uh, what David Harper was doing. And, and again, it's really interesting how the keto diet was so popular a few years ago and everyone was touting all the benefits of it. Every health expert was writing a book about it. And now it's interesting. I saw recently the search volume is way down on keto. And all of a sudden, it's not cool anymore. It still has the same benefits. It still literally can reverse diabetes in some piece in some people. Um, it literally ha can lower inflammation dramatically. Uh, I've seen people lose weight on it. I've seen people uh, reduce inflammation. So um, yeah, so that's a pretty cool one as well. Let's see, as we go down the list here, um, episode 123 is interesting. It's um, Mark David, uh, I believe he runs a website even or wrote a book or the website, I can't remember, called The Psychology of Eating. And again, that's the one that's fascinating to me is this mindset stuff. If people know what to do, why aren't they doing it? Um, so yeah, that's a really interesting one. Episode 121 will always be near and dear to my heart, and that's because we had 102-year-old Dr. Gladys McGarry. She's the author of The Well-Lived Life. Again, she is 102, uh, so a 102-year-old doctor, Six Secrets to Health and Happiness at Every Age. And it was just such a joy to speak with her. And at 102 years old, she was still smiling and having fun and enjoying life. And, you know, she didn't know how to do any of the technological stuff of getting on the podcast. She had someone there helping her get on and all this kind of stuff. But she was just like so, so cool. And, and you could just tell how much a positive attitude and, and having family, she was big on family. She was big on obviously health, right? She was a doctor. She started as a doctor. She started working with her, her parents were doctors in India. Um, they went there to help people um, many, many years ago. Obviously, she's 102 years old. This is when she was a kid. She said she remembers um, helping her mom 
to heal people. And they would literally bring animals and, and elephants and literally everything for her mom to heal. And a big part of it was her attitude and her belief and her love and care and the love that she put into helping the people and the animals that she believed had such a big impact. So it was really, I don't think I, there wasn't like a health tip that really stands out for me from that episode. It was more about how being happy in life and having a positive attitude and living with love and spreading your love and joy. Um, I think that's one of the keys to living to over a hundred years old. So really, really interesting. And right before that was another one of my favorite episodes because it's someone I've been following for many years, Patrick McCowan. He's the author of The Oxygen Advantage. In my opinion, he is the foremost health expert on breathing and oxygen. I believe that there's actually a, a more famous book that came out called Breathe by James Nestor. And I believe that James Nestor consulted with Patrick McCown and a lot of his ideas came from Patrick, Patrick McEwen, sorry, his work. Um, and that's episode 120. Things that stand out there, he, he invented a special type of mouth tape because kind of long story short on breathing, breathe through your nose as much as possible. Even when you're, whatever you're doing, breathe through your nose as much as possible. Obviously, if you're in an all out sprint and you have no choice but to breathe through your mouth, that's one thing. In all other cases, as much as possible, breathe through your nose. And the problem that many people have is at night they are mouth breathing. And that is very, very bad to be mouth breathing at night. You wanna be breathing through your nose. A lot of people don't even realize they're mouth breathing. So taping your mouth at night is one of the biggest life hacks that could literally add years to your life. But most people get nervous with the traditional tape over their mouth. They're like, oh, what if I can't breathe? What if this, what if... So Patrick McEwen um, came out with a type, you probably, if you go on Amazon and type in oxygen advantage mouth tape, um, or I think in the show notes there, if you listen to episode 120, he'll talk more about it, but he made a mouth tape that actually has a hole in the middle. So you can, it, it actually just press it. You, you put the tape, it kind of goes around the outside of your lips and kind of presses your lips down to keep your mouth closed. But if you need to take a sip of water in the middle of the night, you can still open your mouth. If you need to talk, if you need to gasp for air because you're afraid your mouth won't be able to open, you can still open your mouth with this type of mouth tape. So I thought that was really cool. He made it for kids originally and then found that so many adults also felt a lot more comfortable with the mouth tape that had the, the hole in the middle of it. So uh, let's see, I'll probably just do a couple more here. Um, and then let's see here again, we had some more episodes on inflammation, which is really, uh, really, really important. Um, and then we talked about how episode 114, we talked about how your beliefs affect your health and discovering your limiting beliefs and how to change them with Christina Woods. She's a hypnotherapist uh, and also someone who's a kind of a coach around beliefs and belief systems. Uh, we did a couple other episodes, how to reframe your thoughts in action. That's in episode 113. Um, and episode 111, we talk about spiritual secrets for a better life. I actually am a big believer that spiritual spirituality is very good for your health. Um, believing in something positive, being a part of a community. Um, and then for me, we had David Guillaume on in this episode 111, where he, he teaches Kabbalah. And I've been through his Kabbalah course, and it really helped me. It helped me to be less reactive. And that's one of the keys to life, right? Someone says something, whether it's your kids or, or your spouse or someone, family member, that, that, and, and we, we're, so, we're all so easily triggered, right? It's like someone just says one thing, and you're like, well, well I, didn't, I didn't say that. And you're like fighting back. And then this whole big argument starts. And it's like, what if you just paused? Right. And that's the number one concept they that he teaches in Kabbalah. The first thing is to pause and say, what a pleasure, what a pleasure, not what a pleasure that this bad thing happened to me, but what a pleasure that I get to show the universe that I can overcome these challenges without acting like a little baby and crying about it and complaining and, and, and getting mad and triggered and reacting. Right. So the less reactive you are, when you can pause and think and keep yourself calm and centered, I think it's so powerful. So episode 111, uh, David, and David is someone who I've seen firsthand. Um, he, he, he's, he, he's actually built a billion dollar business, uh, believe it or not, which is pretty incredible. Uh, and I've seen him do that. I remember when the business was very small and now it's literally, you know, like a billion dollar business roughly. Uh, I don't know the exact number, but it's, it's around there. And, and he's done that while donating half of his time to teach 
teach Kabbalah and while raising, I believe, four kids he has, maybe five even. Um, and so being a father, teaching this teaching for a nonprofit Kabbalah where uh, he literally is donating his time and not getting paid because he believes the spiritual impact is so important. And there's something there, right? Like this, this billion dollar company that he built, he, manif he, he manifested this, right? There's a certain energy. I can't explain this at all, but there's some sort of energy and him helping all of these people. It was almost, it's, it's, it's kind of like the law of karma, right? It's like karma. He did so much good and helped so many people that then it was, you know, he was blessed from that. So anyway, um, really, really enjoy uh, that one as well. Uh, episode 110, we talk more about hormone replacement therapy and peptides. Um, we talk a little bit about the prescription weight loss injections and like the Ozempegs and those kind of things uh, as well. And uh, I think that is going to be, let's see, what else? Uh, uh, oh, yeah. And in episode 101, uh, we talked to uh, Dr. Bill Harris on the importance of testing your omega-3 levels with an easy at-home solution. He has uh, one of the first omega-3 level testing kits that you can take at home. And he talked about good versus bad omega-3 supplements, the benefits of good omega-3 levels, uh, and why it's so important to make sure you don't have low levels of omega-3. So a lot of people, I'm sure you've probably heard this for years. I know myself, I have been supplementing with fish oil. It's one of the first things that I do. I use the brand called Nordic Naturals. They're kind of the gold standard in terms of purity and clean omega-3 fish oils. Um, so I give, I've been giving my kids fish oil for many years. I've been taking it for many years. I think especially if you're eating more carbs and eating a traditional American diet, you are going to have a really bad omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. You want to get in those omega-3s, just brain health, um, mood, inflammation, all those things are affected by uh, your omega-3 levels. So there you go. That is uh, just a brief summary. Didn't go over every single episode. I wouldn't have had the time, but just off the top of my head, the last 60 episodes, what are the highlights uh, that I had from those episodes? And I hope you enjoyed them. If you want to learn more, go back and check them out. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the episode, can you please leave us a rating or review and subscribe? I've realized that while we have actually increased our downloads a lot, we're actually getting a lot of downloads, which I'm really happy about. We actually have very few ratings. So, and I realized that I've never asked people really to rate much. So I'm asking you now, if you could please rate and review and subscribe. And if you enjoyed the episode, please forward it along to anyone that you think will get value out of this. Also, if you haven't checked out our line of products at buypeakperformance.com, you get 20% off your first order. That's www.buybuypeakperformance.com. Dot com. We have some incredible products, including our organic high altitude coffee. If you don't know this, coffee is one of the most heavily sprayed with pesticides out of any crop. So it's really important that you drink organic coffee. We've gone above and beyond to source what we believe is the highest quality and healthiest organic coffee in the world. We're also famous for our organic green superfood powder. You can get 20% off of that as well at buypeakperformance.com. We also have an organic vegan and paleo plant protein. See, most of the vegan proteins out there are using brown rice protein, which is really not a good source of protein, and it's also a grain. And if you're paleo, you know that grains tend to cause inflammation in some cases for some people. And so we wanted to make one that was paleo-friendly and vegan and organic. We made an amazing amino acid profile, so it's really one of the best plant proteins for muscle building. So you can check out Peak Performance Organic Plant Protein. You can find that on our website. Of course, all our products are on Amazon as well. So thanks again. And again, please, if you enjoyed the episode, please forward it along to someone who you feel can get value out of it. And please leave us a rating, review, and subscribe. Thank you.